I want to talk today about a fundamental rule of engineering drawings. This is from the ASME standard Y145-2018. This is fundamental rule A. It's on page 12 to 13, section 4 of the printed standard. So what I'm going to do is go through this rule, which is about a paragraph long and verbatim. I'm just going to read it out to you. And then I'm going to go through each sentence and explain what it means and give examples. So the examples I'm going to give are ones that I made to illustrate this concept. One irritation I have with the textbooks and ASME standard related things is they all use the exact same examples over and over and over again. So hopefully in this video, you'll see something a little bit different and hope help you understand where tolerances are applied. So let's dive right in. The fundamental rule reads like this. Each feature shall be toleranced. Tolerances may be applied used directly to size dimensions. Tolerances shall be applied using feature control frames when feature definition is basic. Tolerances may also be indicated by a note or located in a supplementary block of the drawing format. See ASME Y14.1 or Y14.1M. Those dimensions specifically identified as reference, maximum, minimum, or stock, parentheses, commercial stock size, do not require the application of a tolerance. So that's it. Now we're gonna go through each sentence in detail. Before we start, I wanna mention one thing. This is common in the ASME standard. If you notice, there's a big contradiction in the beginning and the end. So the beginning says each tolerance shall be toleranced. The last sentence is, do not require the application of tolerance. This is all through the ASME standard. We can explain it away though in the following six sentences. So sentence one, each feature shall be toleranced. The explanation for this is shall, and the ASME standard means it's a mandatory requirement. There's no options. Shall means business. So all features, which a reminder, a feature is a physical portion of a part, such as a surface, pin, outside diameter, or slot. So all features must, be, must not be left up to interpretation. They need dimensions to tell you the magnitude and size of every feature on a part. So these dimensions need tolerances because we can't build anything perfectly. Or just a reminder, a tolerance is the allowed variation in a dimension. So phrases like good shop practice, reasonably good finish, typical, should not be used on drawings because that leaves things open to interpretation. When you say something needs to be made to good shop practice, that means different things to different people, okay? So we're gonna talk about the exceptions to this rule in just a little bit. They're not really exceptions, it's just so you get the tolerance from a different place, okay? So let's keep rolling with sentence number two. Tolerances may be applied directly to size dimensions. So may means that something is optional in the ASME standard. What this implies is that geometric tolerances may also be used to tolerance size dimensions, okay? So a size dimension is a feature of size, something like a cylinder or a hole or a width, okay? So I've got some examples up here. A typical size dimension would be the height of a block. So we've got a rectangular feature with one inch plus or minus 20 thousandths. That is a size dimension. Now tolerance may be applied directly to that. That's what this rule is saying. But by saying may, it means there's an option for something else, okay? The option for something else is geometric tolerance. So I have another example for you here, the same block with a profile tolerance applied to it. In this case, the size of the block is being controlled by that feature control frame with the profile tolerance. There is no tolerance applied directly to the dimension, okay? So I got another example of the same idea, just with a cylinder. So I've got a size dimension with perpendicularity applied to it, and then the same cylinder with a 
basic diameter and a profile feature control frame applied to it. They're both technically allowed ways to accomplish the same thing. So a quick note, why you don't see diameters dimensioned with profile tolerances and basic dimensions is that there's no MMC available for manufacturing or inspection. Next up, sentence number three. Tolerances shall be applied using feature control frames where feature definition is basic. Explanation. In this case, shall, again, means business. There are no exceptions to this one. Features dimensioned by basic dimensions get their tolerance from the feature control frame. What they call title block tolerances do not apply to basic dimensions. So I have an example for you here of something, a title block tolerance. This won't apply to basic dimension. So if it's missing a feature control frame, you can't just pull the tolerance from the title block and use that, okay? So you gotta be very careful when you're using basic dimensions, you have to make sure each and every feature has a feature control frame that takes care of that dimension and tolerance. So I'm gonna be lazy and reuse an example. So we've got that rectangular block, right? So what if we got rid of that flatness dimension on the bottom? We just have a basic dimension and a profile on top. This is not allowed because that bottom surface has no tolerance, right? The only tolerance on that drawing is the profile that only controls that top surface. Now, there's ways to, you know, adjust this by adding and subtracting things, but as drawn, this is not allowed per this rule of the ASME standard, okay? So let's move on to sentence four. Tolerances may also be indicated by a note or located in a supplementary block of the drawing format. So explanation. Again, may means this is an option among other things. So we have first tolerances applied directly to a size dimension. Second, tolerances applied with basic dimensions and feature control frames. And now third, we have the note or title block option to apply a tolerance to a dimension. So supplementary block means near the title block or part of the drawing format, somewhere on the face of a drawing. It's normally in the title block type area. Every company does it a little bit differently. Some companies don't put it on the face of every drawing. They'll have a note that says, see company standard, blah, 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 blah. And that piece of paper will have all their standardized tolerances. So general and local notes often contain tolerances. The difference, a general note applies to everything on the drawing. So you might see a general note that says break edges, you know, 10 thou minimal, right? That could be applied to every edge on the drawing. A local note points to something specifically. So a local note might point to something and say this chamfer 20 thou plus or minus 10 times 20 thou plus or minus 10. Okay, so I have an example up of a block with a chamfer on it. We got a couple different kinds of tolerances. So on the left is a two inches with no direct tolerance applied to it. The tolerance for that dimension comes from that title block tolerance. So if we look at the title block, it says anything with two decimal places is plus or minus 20 thousandths. This is really common with companies to save time. Uh, I would say it's not always a good thing. It can lead to lazy tolerancing practices, but it's very much out there, so you should know exactly what it is. The other example I have on the drawing is a general note that says all fillets radius 20 thou plus or minus 10 unless otherwise specified. That unless otherwise specified is really important because you can run into conflicts on your drawings. It's good practice to just put UOS on basically every note, just in case you make a mistake. And again, that chamfer notation, that 20 thou plus or minus 10 times 20 thou plus or minus 10 is an example of a local note, if I didn't mention that. So next is sentence 
five. This one's real quick. See ASME Y14.1 and ASME Y14.1M. This is all format information for dealing with your drawing format, so your title blocks and things like that, okay? Not gonna go into any detail about that. So let's move on to sentence number six. So sentence number six, those dimensions specified as reference, maximum, minimum, or stock, parentheses, commercial stock size, do not require the application of tolerance. So it appears that this just throws everything we just talked about out the window, but it really doesn't. So let me explain each of these. So a reference dimension is barely a dimension. Reference dimensions are a repeat of a dimension or is derived from other values shown on the drawing. It does not govern production or inspection. Reference dimensions can have a tolerance attached to them. It's a weird thing. I've never seen it on a drawing, but it is technically allowed. It doesn't mean that dimension and tolerance is inspectable. What refer reference dimensions do is basically compute shop math for you on the drawing. The use of reference dimensions is pretty much discouraged in the ASME standard, but you'll see them out there. They have parentheses around them, or in the older standards, it'll have the dimension and then REF in capital letters next to it, okay? So I've got an example of a reference dimension here. We've got a block with a hole in it. The overall width of the block is two inches. The center of the hole to the left side of the block is one inch. The other one inch, we know what it is because of simple arithmetic, but we can't put that dimension on the drawing because it would be over dimension, okay? But if we wanted to help somebody out to show them what that dimension is without having to do that quick mental math, we can with that reference dimension, okay? So they can't have tolerances because it doesn't make sense, right? See my other videos when I do tolerance stack ups, um, you can get some more information about how all that works. So let's move on to the maximum and minimum concept. So these don't have tolerances per se, but they kind of do have a tolerance. So max and min are used when the design determines that the other unspecified limit is zero or infinity. So this is used in situations like a radius. So I've got an example here that shows a shaft and that shoulder of the radius says, as a local note, it says radius, 30 thousandths max. So that radius can be anywhere between 30 thousandths and zero. So it could be a square corner. This is common to just save time in manufacturing. The machinist will go pick up a tool nose radius of 20 thousandths and they'll know they're in tolerance no matter what. There's no need to really measure beyond that. Another example of a minimum and a maximum being used is a hole call out. So this example has a half inch 13 UNC 2B thread. It's got a depth 1.00 minimum thread. So this means the thread must be one inch minimum. This is really easy to check. The next is a depth one and a half inches max tap drill. So you've got a minimum thread, can't be smaller than that, but the thread could be as deep as the tap drill. You could do it if you want. It's a lot of trouble for the machinist, but as far as design is concerned, it doesn't really matter. The tap drill depth needs to be limited for, uh, for design reasons because you don't want to punch through the other side of the part, right? So you couldn't switch those. You couldn't have a max thread, min tap drill, but you can have a minimum thread and maximum tap drill. So those are just two examples of how min and max can be used out there in the real world. Next up, we have stock sizes. So stock sizes are determined by manufacturer, code, organization, etc. They still have a tolerance, but it's just more difficult to find. So if you see something like a 22 gauge sheet metal stock, you can go to that catalog or manufacturer and find out what their tolerances are for that sheet metal. You end up having to look in standardized tables to find things. So that example I just gave with a thread, right? you never see tolerances with threads. Why? The reason is because of that UNC. That means unified coarse thread. 
which means there's an ASME standard that covers all the tolerances for that thread. It's called ASME B1.1 Unified and Screw Threads. This contains all of the tolerances you need for that thread. You wouldn't want to put that directly on the drawing because that book is like 200 pages long, okay? So even if you didn't know it, you have been seeing the tolerances applied to stock, whether you, know, you knew it or not, okay? They're out there. Same thing if you go buy a two by four from Home Depot, it doesn't have tolerances on it, but the manufacturer has their tolerances for how they produce and select those particular pieces, okay? So another example are socket head cap screws. This is ASME B18.3. So when you specify a socket head cap screw on a drawing, you'll just say, you know, quarter 20, you know, one inch long, whatever, ASME B18.3. B and if somebody's gonna make that screw, they'll go in that standard and find all the dimensions they need for that particular size and length. So that's it, that's all six sentences and essentially all the different ways tolerances can be applied on a drawing. So the summary is that all dimensions require a tolerance. Even if the tolerance isn't immediately visible, it is somewhere. Even with the stock part, there are tolerances somewhere to govern the actual size and dimension of any feature on the drawing. So that's it for my discussion of ASME Fundamental Rule A. If you enjoyed the video, please comment below and like and subscribe.